everybody, and welcome to the live stream. I am your hostess, Jenna Moresi. Um, if you are uh, new here, I am a number one Amazon bestselling author of dark fantasy romance as well as writing craft books. If you like your books filled with kissing and stabbing and magic, check out The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister. They're available at all major retailers. They're award winners or bestsellers. You should totally check them out. They're linked below. And if you need help writing your book um, and you want a step-by-step -step guide, check out Shut Up and Write the Book. It is my most best-selling novel to date. It's not a novel. It's a writing craft book. You guys know what I mean. Um, and it's also available at all major retailers. It is also linked below. Um, another shout out right now, all of my merch is 15% off using code folklore. Um, so if you want to pick up some merch goodies, mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, all that good stuff, check it out. Um, I think it's linked below. It, it'll be linked somewhere at the merch store. But yes, it's 15% off uh, with code Folklore. If you are new to these live streams, what we do are games, writing sprints, and Q&As. If you're not familiar, a writing sprint is where we set the timer for 20 minutes. Oh my god. My groceries just arrived. It's okay, guys. We're just gonna... Go get your groceries and I'll super slowly introduce myself. No, that's okay. It can sit for a second. But if you are in Cyber Central, you heard me say that the groceries are going to arrive as soon as I start the stream. Mm -hmm. I said it. Mm -hmm. I said it. Did it not happen? Yes, see, you called it. I mm -hmm. sure fucking did. Okay, mm -hmm. but anywho, I'm going to go ahead and introduce everything. Um and then I, <laughs> it is true. Yes, she said I sure did. But anywho, guys. Um, oh, yeah. A writing sprint is where we set the timer for 20 minutes and we write as many words as we possibly can during those 20 minutes. Um, I am not going to provide a prompt for you. You are going to be working on whatever your work in progress currently is. Um, if you're not in the drafting phase of that, no worries. You can critique for 20 minutes. You can. Um, uh, beta read for 20 minutes you could edit for 20 minutes you could do chores for 20 minutes the idea is to be productive together and then once uh, the sprint is done we will open things up to writerly questions anywho i'm going to have iona introduce herself while i bring the groceries in um iona take it away <laughs> Hi, I'm Iona Wayland. I'm a dark fantasy author, and my book, Ashes, is about a Latinx woman who is avenging her uh, dead brother's um, spirit so that his soul can rest. And if you're interested in that, you can get it in ebook and paperback and audiobook formats on Amazon and Audible. And then um, I'm also uh, a podcaster, but I'm taking a long, long hiatus from that. So today was the update about that. And then, um, and that's of creepy corn folklore, if you're interested in some creepy, cozy content. And let's see, I'm trying to think of what else. I have merch. This is one of my shirts. It has two spooky souls in a cornfield. And um, I also do crystal ball readings, if you want to check that out, too. Yeah, now everyone needs to talk to me, <laughs> so so that I'm not here all alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I do crystal ball readings. They're lots of fun. I don't know if you can see, but there's a bunch of the crystal balls that I use right here. Um, oh yeah, and I have haunted dolls, but that's like for like fun. Like um, I mean, this is Carson, and here's Boba. And they're a lot of fun, but that's on my, that's like mostly for fun. Whereas the things that I'm like, my, my wares that I'm selling are scary stories and crystal ball readings. <laughs> oh yeah. So there's been like a thing in the closet. I don't know what the thing is. Um, if you see movement, it's most likely a cat, but you still can't be sure. There are a lot of these babies, like, or not babies, there's a lot of these baby books for my babo that she either wasn't interested in anymore, or like, kind of never got interested in, and they were the types of books that can talk. So we had a bunch of those books, like, stored up high, like, there's like a really high shelf that's like the wire shelving. And they all started talking like a lot this week. And so I finally had to like, move them out of the room and if they're out of the room it's fine but if they're in the room or around the closet then they start talking again so that's fun yeah 
Oh, look, I took your advice about physically putting writing on my to-do list. Oh, yeah, I have to do that and get in my routine. And holy wow, thank you. That's so nice. I'm so glad. Wow, 20 chapters in two days. Whoa. Yeah. Kachu is right here. I don't know if you can hear. Let me cover my to-do list because it has names on there. But here's Kachu. So he's... And there's Cranberry. Whoa, whoa. I can't. It's backwards. Sorry. This entity is Cranberry. So don't worry. That's not like <laughs> something bad. But yeah. Oh, see, like, so see, the Flores Garden said, I once went to Barnes and Noble, and as I walked past the shelf, an entire collection of Where's Waldo books suddenly flew off the shelves to land the shelves to land up my feet. See, that makes me think there's a ghost named Waldo where it's like, can you see me now? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's fun. I'm scrolling back up just to see if I, I'm sure I missed. Does Boba like, no, does... Does Boba like Boba? Oh, Boba T? Yes. Um, actually, the first, the reason I called her Boba is when I love Boba T. And whenever she's around or like I take her to work or something, a lot of lucky things happen. And one of the days was I went in to go get Boba T and someone had ordered two by accident or something, gave me like a free one. Like one person gave me a sticker at one point. These are on different days. It was like really strange. So she's like kind of like a lucky, she's like a lucky kiddo that comes with me to work. So she's a lot of fun. Yeah. Let's see. I hope you're doing well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm doing better from COVID because <laughs> it finally got me after four years. But this weekend was crazy with my gallbladder and I might need it removed. So that's a fun thing that I just went through. <laughs> It was terrible. And also, thank you for the hair compliments because I just, like, took a shower and let it air dry and it never turns out like this. I usually have to, like, do something to it or, like, put it in curlers or something. But today it just, like, did this and I'm just rolling with it. <laughs> I will take a good hair day after how rough my health was this weekend. <laughs> uh, let's see. Waldo is tired of not being seen. That's hilarious. How long did it take me to write my novel? I want to say, I want to say if like, it took less than a year. Um, but be, like, when life got in the way and has been getting in the way for my sequel, it's taken me like a couple years because I was pregnant and recovering from a concussion and like all this health stuff has been going on for me for a while. So it took me a lot longer um, but I, if I were to put in all my writing sessions together and actually squish them together, I'm sure it would take about a year. I think that's my time frame that it takes me. <sighs> wow. Hello. I saw nice some. Of, that was quick. I, I just put the perishables away. Everything else is just hanging out there. Oh, hello, butters. Hello. Say hi to everyone. Hi, butters. <laughs> she just looked up really quickly. Uh -huh. I saw this and I thought she said, how is birth coming along? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> It's fine because every time I see Birch, I see bitch. Oh, so, that's better. The, how is bitch coming along? How is this bitch coming along? No, this is coming <laughs> along well. Um, I actually like have been getting really good feedback from Zora, one of my critique partners, and they keep sending me stuff like at exactly the right time. Like I'll be having a horrible day, and then they'll be like, "I did a couple more chapters." I'm like, "Wow!" And and I didn't realize, like, I did the thing where I think it's gonna take like longer than it actually does yeah and I'm like oh this will take me five years to complete like no no joke like I'm like this will take me multiple years to complete these things that I need to tweak and then I actually do it and it takes 20 minutes two hours like it's yep. not oh I'm so embarrassed I was like so overwhelmed by it and then Whenever I've been getting the feedback, I'm like, oh, never mind. It's easier. And then <laughs> there's me with the opposite. Like, the Savior's Army is going to take me a year, and now I'm on four years. Like, but that's See? not my fault. That's no, not... I was just talking about how the reason I couldn't finish Birch and, like, I, I would say if I said if I could squish together all my writing time, it would end up being a year probably yeah. or, like, same 10 months, something, like, oh, around that time. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little less. But because of all my health stuff, 
that yep. I wasn't like able to do that. And it's right. been like a couple fucking years. But for you, what you were talking about is the same thing where you're like, it won't take me long, but uh health. <laughs> got yeah, health family. got in the way. Yes. Yeah. How are you, Cliff and Princess Butters, doing? I'm doing okay, just super overwhelmed. There's a lot going on currently. It's mm-hmm. good stuff with mm-hmm. one um, bump in the road, but that wasn't my fucking fault. It's the fault of men. Um, but <laughs> but uh, um, it's uh, I'm lots of really good things are happening. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we should address the Sappho of Sapphic Island question. I guess we could. It doesn't really matter. We could. We can do it. Like yeah. make it brief. Yeah. So um, it up all the time. Yeah. But but um, basically, uh, a lot of good things are happening. It's just very very overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> the fault of men. Uh, yeah. Like seriously, it's men. Mark that on the bingo card, guys. The bingo card is um, is in pinned Central. in Cyborg Central. Yes. The new bingo cards. But anywho, it shuffles uh, every time you touch it. Right. Uh, so, but anywho, um, oh, thank you so much. Um, anywho, I'm doing well, just overwhelmed with good mm-hmm. things, but it's still a lot. Mm-hmm. Butters got a bath the other day, and so she's extra That's soft so and silky. Yes, you heard your name. Come here. Show everyone how beautiful you are. No? Well, we'll be waiting. She's like, I refuse. Come on. You're famous. Be famous. No? Okay. Anywho, and Cliff is... Health-wise, he's doing fantastic. Like, he's doing better than he's been since before he broke his spine. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's Mm -hmm. great. However, he's been having super violent nightmares. And so he's not sleeping through the night. And then during the day, he's all like, you know. So that's what's going on with him. He's napping right now. I'm sweating from all those groceries. But yeah, Mm -hmm. um, that's where we're at. Um, I guess we'll... Butters, let us love you exactly. The fault of men should be a book title. I feel like it already. I is. agree. Um, but yeah, what happened with Haley? Uh, you're yeah. better at summarizing okay. than I am. If I go into, I mean, unless you want me to, I don't Here's, know. No, I will give you the quick rundown. Okay. Quick rundown is there were some concerning behaviors. We brought it up to her, whatever. She kind of ignored them. Or in my case, if I brought it up to her, she would double down on it so that wasn't Mm -hmm. fun but one of the things that happened was that in her writing when I was her critique partner there were some things that popped up that heavily borrowed from another uh book (laughs) that we all know and love book (laughs) series that we all know and love and when I brought it up to her she minimized it but I was like it's fine that's what critique partners are for everyone everyone's worst fear or most people's worst fear if they're a writer is accidentally copying someone but there were like whole scenes and lines and dialogue and whatever taken and so then within like the span of a week or two or something she kind of stopped talking if we asked her what was going on she would say she was trying to be offline but then she would be online all the time and then uh, we were like, okay, but and then she wouldn't talk to us, but she would ask for the weekly live stream link. And then when mm-hmm. she was on live, she would act like we were all okay and that there wasn't any weirdness going on. Mm-hmm. And Even I didn't she think... hadn't spoken to us in seven days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she super took advantage of Jenna, in my opinion. Then um, like two weeks go by and out of nowhere, she was like, I feel like a bad person when I talk to you. So I'm not going to talk to either of you anymore. And so she cut contact. So yeah. I don't know where Haley is, but yeah, we don't hopefully know. She can reflect on her actions and take some accountability. Please we... don't reach out to her. That would be humiliating. Yeah, it's we're already... not we're not here to s- spread any like hate or anything. We're just no. being honest about Super what honest. happened. She also her... can still change it. Yeah, like before her publication like that that isn't the point like the because everyone has that fear and even some people have accidentally plagiarized it's like a common thing and it's yeah. just if someone points it out to you you just fix it but um i think the the telling part the hurtful part that feels shitty is the like not taking accountability and then also like i was <laughs> yeah yeah. But what were you going to say? Oh, I was I was going to say, like, I didn't even think anything of it. I was like, okay, well, I pointed it out. She'll fix it. That's what critique partners do. But it's just the, like, never mind. Like, I don't like, mm-hmm. I don't like talking to you both anymore. And like, to be clear, she didn't explicitly say this is why she's not talking to us anymore. Um, she even said to us, um, 
talk. I don't like talking. I can't talk to you guys anymore because you make me feel like a bad person and you make me feel like an imposter. I don't want to get into the reason why. Um, we were just kind of left to connect the dots because the ghosting happened right after the critique was provided. So mm-hmm. it was our best guess. Yes. Um, and um, it could be something else. I don't know what else it could possibly be because I've spent a lot of time reflecting and seeing what I could have done differently or like if I and said we were very wrong. supportive we you know did lots of promo and guidance and stuff yep. so we do feel like we were stabbed in the back uh but mm-hmm. we are not sharing this to um send hate her way we are just being honest because she was a big figure on my platform and for like months yeah so it's like and I'm just at a point in my life where I'm tired of uh, being not being, all the time. No, yeah, not being honest to spare the reputation of someone who didn't reciprocate. I guess yeah. you could say. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So that that's what happened. There's a lot more to it than that. We're that's the summary. <laughs> but yeah, that's anywho, the super short version. So anywho, um, we prepared a game. I, I don't know if you wanted to play that right now, but. That could be fun. I only came up with one part of the game. And even though you gave me plenty of time to come up with stuff. <laughs> so I might have to wait for that one. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to play. We're going to play two truths and one lie a little Oof. bit later. Maybe oh. we'll do. You can come up with the rest of it. Jurors, but I'm just very excited because I really like mine. <laughs> but, oh, I'm excited to say. I'm, I'm excited. So, and even the one that I, I have that's like, it, it's like dumb so I, I don't even know if I like what I'm doing <laughs> I only did it to her homework I didn't <laughs> mine I like I always do mine in a theme and it makes it easier to come up with stuff so my theme oh. this time is epic fails okay so, I feel like I failed plenty of times so I could totally well some of these are other people's fails that I was subjected to <laughs> but one is my fail my okay. fail uh Wait, don't say don't say it don't say because then it's the truth one Huh? You know, or it's the lie, you know. Like well, if you I... say my fail is this. No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm not I was gonna say it was my fail and then two male fails. That's oh, I'm okay. Saying. I thought you said my fail, and then I thought is you were the... about to tell the story. I was like, wait, no. <laughs> no, I know <laughs> that one's the truth. But to be fair, that is something I would do. So <laughs> I, I am not good <laughs> at not all the time. revealing spoilers. So okay, also I just need to show something. Hold on, can you guys still hear me when I do this? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. why the fuck is that that everyone who joins the stream has a picture and I don't? Oh, I had to add in my picture. How do you do that? I don't remember. Oh, oh no, like that's not how you do it. Wait. See? And I even updated my Edit audio yeah. avatar. Okay, hold on. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Put your, yeah, okay. put your put your um your author picture up here. Yes. I, I I literally spent like 15 minutes before this stream trying to figure this out. I am like that. the every every day that passes I sound older and older. I <laughs> think, how do I upload a picture? <laughs> One of those standing pictures. What do I do? <laughs> okay, here we, all right, here we go. Aha. Okay. Come on. Come on. Ah, I did it. Yay, you look beautiful. I love <laughs> that picture you. of you. How could you narrow it down to only two male fails? You know what? <laughs> That's very fair. That's very fair. To be fair, during the last stream, it was all male fails. So, like, I'm just, you know, I, I've got plenty to choose from, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Yay, it worked. I'm looking at the comments. Oh, they want to know where you got your shirt. Oh, ah, uh, it's in my merch store. It's not from Redbubble. It's from um, uh, Teespring, but which is just called Spring now. But if you go to my website um, of creepycoreandfolklore.com, you can check it out. And I have my merch there. And I have three unique designs. I worked with the original illustrator for the uh, cover or thumbnail or whatever it's called for my podcast um and uh he was super generous and he did three uh unique designs and i commissioned him for that and it was very cool so yes. 
Go buy her merch. Yeah. One is of Kachu, and yes. that, that one time you and I wore, the, wore it on the same day, right? which I think was funny. Amazing. Um, and then there's this one, and there's a very caffeinated skeleton, which I am like, I like that resonates with me. Yes. <laughs> same uh um what was i gonna say um also because i ordered groceries because i'm like a fucking look i'm talking about my groceries i'm so old anywho look what i got m and oh is this a peanut m and m peanut butter m and m because i don't i hate peanuts i feel mm -hmm. like you have to really enunciate that or it sounds like you hate penis but to be fair that's true too. it's so funny uh, <laughs> I hate peanuts, but I love peanut butter M&Ms, and they were there. Oh, my goodness, butters. This is what she wants. I smell the peanut butter. She's butters. like, I'll be famous if you pay me. <laughs> right? Come on, come on. Everyone see. Look how beautiful you are. She's like, come on. She's so fluffy. Can... You can tell how fluffy her, like, chest hair is. So she's yeah. like. Look at you. Yeah. Aww. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, yes. Plain and the peanut butter. Those are the only M and M's I like. So we are on the same page, Brady. Uh, so yes, mm -hmm. that will be my snack while I while I uh, stream today. Bye, nice. Um <laughs> This is so relatable. Yes, we are the mm -hmm. same. Butter's so cute. Yes, she is. She is currently. Um, <laughs> they have a Je Jeremy Renner picture. Did you I saw. Did you see the Jeremy Renner like thing that got like completely run down and like people started blowing it up and there was like a whole thing. I'm going to, I'm going to send you. Okay. So there's, okay, this, yeah, there's this, I'm not making sense, but basically there's this really cool creator named Izzy and their YouTube channel is called Izzy's like I Z Z Z Y Z Z Z or something like that. And if you go there, they cover the Jeremy Ren Renner, like, debacle where he tried to have his own social media platform but it was just like pay you just pay for things and he put like no effort into it and then a bunch <laughs> of people figured out how to hack it so they would pretend to be jeremy renner and they would, oh, all, no. they would all use that picture so it makes it like were you a part of the chaos <laughs> like two years ago or whatever it was but oh, yeah that's amazing so it was funny but that's what made me think of it not the Jeremy Renner app. Yep. <laughs> I was talking about the Jeremy Renner app. It was amazing. Butters is just staring at me. Yes. Anyone say hello? Hi. Look at that wiggle waggle. Look at the oh, wiggle waggle. Look at that puff puff tail. Hi. She's so cute. She wants to play. Whoa. 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 So dangerous. She's ferocious. Artie does that if I scratch the the like the bed. Like he'll do that. That's adorable. I love that. Um, Jenna, I'm trying to get my plot structure all figured out and I'm entirely lost. I've read the entire chapter on plot structure in your book. Um, what are you lost on? Because well, which one are you using? Right. That's another one too. Yeah. Um, if uh, keep in mind that like the structure I provide that it's my structure, it's very detailed. You don't have to be as detailed as that. You could mm -hmm. just do a three act structure. That's essentially just three paragraphs, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think... Um, you might be overthinking it if you're entirely lost. The idea is in order to structure your novel, what you need is an inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. Mm -hmm. Start there. That would be my advice if you're lost. Start there. What is What gets the plot into motion? That's the inciting incident. Um, what is the pinnacle where essentially like the problem comes to a head? Um, I, I usually start with the, that, the beginning, the inciting incident and climax, and then I figure out the rising action. What are all the points that lead up to that big moment? And then what is the fallout from that climax? That's basically like start there, okay? And then you won't be lost because that's like super generic. So you'll be good. What say you? Um, I was thinking too, um, depending on what kind, I think they should start with what you were talking about so that they have the basics of it, like the mm -hmm. basic staples of it. But looking at different plot structures is helpful to see what fits with you. I personally, when I was very new to plotting, but I realized that's what helps me the best, um, I had to use the popcorn method personally. Not mm -hmm. that that's going to be your answer to everything, um, but uh, it kind of walks me through each step. 
Yeah, um, I provide a sample of my structure in there, but it's extremely detailed <laughs> and it applies to fantasy romance. It's not necessarily like there are points in there that when I write rom-coms, they're not going to be relevant. There's not going to be a training sequence in a rom-com. You know what I mean? So it's like I provide my look at that tail. I mm -hmm. see you could chew. Uh, so so just, you know, j j just keep in mind that my personal method works for me you don't need every single point the only points you need to have are an inciting incident rising action climax falling action and resolution that is required in like any story so um i was gonna say something oh another thing is watch movies this is a really easy way to do it R watch movies and see if you could name the different parts you know what what's the inciting incident of the movie what's the climax of the movie you know um see if you can name it it'll start it'll start to help you realize how prevalent it is that's um, a good one because because i i like how you said to do it with movies too because that's a little bit shorter than like committing yeah. to like a novel and then yeah. yeah and but if you watch like a tv even each show mm -hmm. um or, or episode sorry each episode in a show will have that same story structure exactly sometimes a little more simple simplified than the other but that's a little right. good or bad either. i feel like this is a good question for you because i believe you use the snowflake yes method. it's the same thing as the popcorn method or the snowflake method um uh what it does is it asks you to come up with like okay when i was new to it i d had no idea how to um plot and also i had never met jenna so and and the book had not been written like that yes. that uh shut up and write a book because i'm pretty sure if i had seen that first then that's what i would have gone to obviously but excuse me whenever i was new to plots i was getting really overwhelmed by seeing all the different types of plots and i was like or plotting methods i should say and i was like what the hell is going on and then <laughs> um people were like this is what pixar uses and this is what disney uses i'm like i don't fucking care i want to know how to write a goddamn book so this guy who writes like pumps out books and I cannot remember his name, but he came up with this method of doing it called the snowflake method or the popcorn method. The reason it's called that is because it takes you from a kernel or the center of an idea and has you branch out. Like if it's a snowflake, if you're visualizing it like a snowflake or puff out like a piece of popcorn and your ideas. And it is, it was so helpful. Now I still use like the beginning couple steps of that one and then my own way I personally plot um, to, to figure out where my book needs to go. Amazing. Incredible. I love the tip of analyzing other storytelling media. Exactly. Because yeah. th honestly, that makes it so much easier, in my opinion, because well, the only bad thing about it is it sort of it can sort of ruin movies for you because you start being able to predict everything. Yeah, um, that's fine. Uh, as someone who is in that life, it's it's all good. Uh, but uh, but when you analyze like movies and TV shows and stuff, it makes it so much obvious, like so much more obvious how easy structure is. Mm -hmm. And then you stop overthinking it and you're like, oh, it's literally in everything. We're, we're okay. Right, boys. Right, you little moocher. Hello, come here. She's so soft. She's always soft, but af right after a bath, she's extra soft. Mm -hmm. she, she, hello. she has <laughs> such a good color too. I know. She's so beautiful. She's like a chocolate caramel drop. Yeah. Some Someone called her, one of the vets called her a Godiva chocolate drop. Which I thought <laughs> yes. was her name at the pound was Coco because um, she's brown. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But oh, my yeah. God, I'm so glad you changed. Yeah, yeah we were <laughs> we were not going to keep that. I've changed uh, every single animal that I've rescued. Except, well, except for Pichu. Yeah. But that's because he's five, you know. Also, Anastasia. Anna. Yeah. yeah oh, well, that's a good name. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, we'll go with that. Yeah, we've changed every pet we've rescued as well. Rambo was originally Pogo because he jumps so high. That's hilarious. Right. But I'm glad you changed it to Rambo also because he was he was a little like um mini poodle, right? Yes. <laughs> and so I like that it's this little puff that's like Rambo enters the arena and it's like right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea. It was originally going to be Hercules, but we were like, that's too long, you know? Yeah, um, and Rambo sounds like Pogo, like for a puppy, so yeah, I yeah. can see that. Yeah, he he was originally Pogo because he could jump so high. We had like a, we had like a doggy door to the garage, so mm -hmm. like he could go in the backyard, and then if it rained, um, he could go in if we were out, you know, and he was mm -hmm. alone. He could come into the garage 
we had a little enclosure for him in the garage that had like a crate that he could sleep in and food and water and a rug and toys and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, he jumped over the fence of it and it was like, that sounds like Monty. (laughs) That sounds like Monty. He can, he's my, oh my gosh, he can spring so high. Mm -hmm. I remember there was this uh, anti-climbing, like at this rescue where I worked, which is the same one where I got Kachu, but um, he, there was this anti-climbable, like there was a no climbing wall. Like it was like a anti-climbing, like no dog can jump over it. And I was like, I swear Monty's going to get out. And she's like, oh, you're such a good dog, mom. You always worry about your dog. And I was like, no, I'm telling you, like he's going to get out. Turns out he was like fields away. And I was like, God <laughs> damn it. You how gotta he, listen to me. She's like, how did he do it? I'm like, I don't know. But whatever, it, whatever, like, like, what is it called? Fail safes or whatever you have. Like he'll find the littlest little... Right. failures in the fence and jump over them yeah yeah some dogs just have that tigger power you know, you know? yes but yeah too. i like i i think that it's great that um rambo was like that too like yeah he could jump so high he also was so much tinier like monty is technically a small dog but he's like a large small dog because he's like a beagle pug we mm-hmm. think jack russell makes so he's like that height but like rambo's like teensy i have no idea how he got over the dog like yeah he was like 10 pounds oh my god and and he just (laughs) he was very small and a little white puff ball and we were like he needs a tough name because he had been abused so he was like very Uh. insecure we're like he needs the confidence (laughs) he needs the confidence Uh right exactly but anywho i think we will do the first sprint so that you could come up with your questions for Mm -hmm. the or your, your truth your truths and a lie um uh, what is everyone working on during the sprint? I'm going to go first. I'm going to do the dishes. So uh, that's my least favorite chore, but it makes me feel grounded at the same time. So I don't know. I'm definitely going to dive into Birch. Nice. Really. I was originally going to work on the Savior's Army during the stream, but mm-hmm. I have a lot of chores to do that have to be done today. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, what? I'm just going to get it done. And then maybe I can spend most of tomorrow working on it. Uh, oops. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. I have found my footing with, oh, oh yeah. I forgot the hearts. <laughs> yeah, I want to do that for them too. Yeah, with that the circle. So nice. Fantasy. Anyway, what is your favorite outright dark trope? Um, I really like torture. I don't know if that's a trope, but oh, I God. like torture. It is but... a trope. <laughs> so there um, you go. <laughs> I like, obviously, you know, this is a real, but I definitely like um, zooming in on people's grief. Mm-hmm. a lot but you know you have a lot of torture mine has a lot of grief so it makes sense. it all makes sense yeah there's a there's a there's a some grief in the saver's army but it's more of oh, the for P- sure ptsd variety where you're not you're you're not even yet aware like they're they're still in their phases of what's wrong with me as opposed to oh. why am i not over this yet this happened months ago or years ago or whatever the, the number yeah. is that they say is like the magic number you're like oh you fool right <laughs> messed up about this for a long time right you're um, bucked you're bucked out of context jenna i really like torture that should be the next merch idea it is also whenever we come back from the sprint i do have my two truths and a lie so oh yay did you did you already come up with that oh yeah for sure <laughs> i just thought of them as we were talking and oh, like, okay oh also i have your second um case oh yeah i no, saved okay. it <laughs> Oh, nice. That's so exciting. Um, So I got Jenna a cover to her Kindle. And then it Amazon told me it was a lost at sea. <laughs> or like something of equivalent where it's like, it was traveling over the whatever sea and now it's lost. I'm like, what the hell happened? <laughs> and so I was like, well, shit. And so I quick like ordered one from Etsy. That is like a, a hand made one, I think, or a hand printed one or something. And so it was really funny because um, uh, like then the one that was lost at sea randomly showed up at your house and I was yeah. like, what the hell? And now, so now you have two covers. So the second yes, one. I'm was, all ready to go. You know, one <laughs> could be the travel cover. One could be yes. the at home cover. Yes. Something like that. Butters is just so cozy. Yes, you are. You're in the cozy. Oh my goodness. I've awakened the beast. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to... There we go! Uh, he's doing the thing! It's going to be an okay stream. Like, everything's going to be all right. Right. <laughs> She's full of feistiness and spunk. Um, anywho, um, we're going to sprint. I'm going to go do the dishes. Iona's going to work on Birch. 
Um, oh, oh, hello, hello. Hashtag butter's blessed. <laughs> butter's blessed. We love it. I love it. Everyone, mark that on your bingo card. Um, friendly reminder, we will be muted. If you want to listen to music, play your own goddamn music. Um, let me actually set the timer. Butters, you want me to throw the ball? Here you go. Go get it. Okay. She loves that ball. Okay. Setting the timer. Let's go. Three, two, one, sprint.
All right, folks, the sprint is over. How did you do? I was productive as fuck. I did the dishes. I um, put away the non-perishables. I um, tidied the kitchen area. We had a bunch of boxes that needed unloading, and I did the recycling. So, huzzah. Nice. What about you? I did a lot of editing. There was a less editing than I that I needed to do until I got to chapter... And there's 27 total, and I actually might squish two together um, based on this feedback. But for now, let's see what chapter I'm on. And now I'm on chapter nine. Nice. That's my lucky number. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. <laughs> Jump scare, everyone. Put that on your bingo card. Um, <laughs> all right, folks. Looks like people had a rough time this sprint that's totally fine oh, i didn't i didn't get any words done i cleaned dishes that's a big deal yeah so um you know we do what we can um anywho it's time to play two truths one lie who should go first do you want to should i either or well i'm bad at uh trivial decision making so i'm making you do it I'm voluntelling you to do it because I want to know the the okay. male. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, when it comes to big decisions, I have no problem. But when it mm -hmm. comes to the little things, I'm mm -hmm. always like, Cliff, you decide. Decide <laughs> for me. He'll be like, I could have Mexican food. I could have burgers. Or I could have Chinese. I'm like, just pick one. Damn it. <laughs> it's like, I know what the options are. Right. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Again, this is two truths, one lie. The rules are we are going to uh, say three facts about our lives. Um, then I'm going to give Iona a minute to grill me on any of the three facts. She can grill me on all of them. And then at the end, um, you guys need to be thinking about questions you have. And we'll answer three questions. And then you guys have to decide which one is the lie. And my the theme for my questions is epic fails. So everything is a fail of some sort. Okay. Fact number one. One time on a date, a dude told me all about how he only had one dropped testicle. No. <laughs> Fact number two. In business school, I had a professor who kept interrupting lectures to talk about Thai sex workers sticking oh. batteries up their butt. Wow, that is super inappropriate if that one's true. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> number, th number three, when I worked at Old Navy, I accidentally leaned on the button to my headset and every other coworker heard me singing along to the store playlist. Oh. Do you need me to repeat them? No, I think I got it. Okay, I'm setting the timer for one minute. Wait, actually, wait, before you do that, what was the first one again? I'm sorry. Oh, no, this is a testicle one. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, one time right, on I'm a date, now. a dude told me all about how he only had one dropped testicle. <laughs> so we got testicles, we got Thai sex workers sticking batteries up their butt, and we got singing over the headset at Old Navy. Got it. Three, two, one, go. What song was it? TKO um, by La Tigra. Okay. TKO, TKO. <laughs> uh -oh. Um, what about uh, why was he talking about sex workers? It was just sex? fucking weird. He was a did dirty, he deal with it? Like I don't understand. Man. He kept talking about all of his trips to Thailand mm, and how nice. there's lots of sex workers and boys willing to stick batteries up their ass and stuff. And we we're just like, this was a philosophy, a business philosophy oh, class. Business philosophy. Oh. He's talking about a different kind of business <laughs> for no reason. Like, that's not what you're there for. Legitimate. Yeah. That's legitimate. I feel bad for anyone who had to come into contact with him in Thailand, if that's true. Yeah. And then also, what prompted the one ball dis drop discussion? He's just started. I'm like one of those people where people feel very comfortable spilling their deep, dark secrets to me. Mm -hmm. And he just started he started telling me a lot of things that I don't want to say because they're very personal and it would be disrespectful to him, yeah. but things that I wouldn't share to someone that I was only on a second date with. And uh -huh. then he told me about the testicle and I was like, okay. Which like side note, 
that's fine that that happened. It's the oversharing that I'm disturbed by. My it was horse, very much trauma dumping. Yeah, it was. Tra- yes, yes. Because I'm like, that is fine. Lots of people have that situation. Also, lots of horses. This is a random horse girl moment. Uh, <laughs> have that problem. My horse Phoenix had that problem, and he had to have like surgery, and then in surgery he almost died and got a blood transfusion from a mule, which I didn't even know you could do that. Like Jeez. I did not. Know- but yeah, but he's fine now, and he has both removed anyway, so it's fine. But um, <laughs> it, they're called uh, when it, like it's called like when one ball doesn't drop. It's called crypt. Like he's a crypt dwarf or a, it's a crypt something, but not cryptid. I keep trying to say cryptid. Anyway, that's my one ball information for everyone. <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> to question someone said i'm trying really hard not to jump to conclusions because i think i know the answer already Ooh. We're talking about sex workers is the lie i uh, hope but i don't think so <laughs> okay so let's go with the three questions for you guys was he proud he only had one big boy testy no he was ashamed um Ooh. he was really really embarrassed and he was like i why would he share it on the second thing then? he was I like mean... i haven't told like anyone this but i feel like i can tell you or oh, he's no. like he, he but the thing is is it's like it was just up in his body you know yeah. It just had it gone into his yeah. sack. And I'm just like, I I don't, I mean, like, I don't mean to, like, it's, you know, his thing, but, like, I I don't care. You know, <laughs> like, I don't even I know Most you. people wouldn't also. Yeah. Like, even if you guys had been together for years and years and years, which this was the second date, so super bad, I don't think anyone cares, like, about that. Yeah, it was weird. Um, it is 5 p.m. for me, and it's, it's 8 p.m. for Iona. Mm-hmm. Um, but guys, you have two more questions. <laughs> you are good at this game. I try. Virus, come on. She wants to go outside, but then if I open the door for her, she just stares. You know? <laughs> guys, two more questions. Someone asked what song I was singing. I already answered that one. It was TK. TK. Um, I did not like the Old Navy playlist, but there were two songs that they played that I did. I really liked. And that was TKO by Lay T. Gray. And then, um, oh, um, in the meantime by future heads that song is like my like personal anthem because it's all Amazing. about having to tolerate really annoying people how long were you on the headset uh so everyone could hear i don't know how long it was because i was leaning on it i was working in the what's it called the fitting room and mm-hmm. so I was leaning on the the table and so the headset goes like this and it has the button to talk right here so mm-hmm. i was leaning on it and all i know is that when i like unleaned my boss went on the headset and said whoever is singing maybe get back to work or something really snotty and i was like mortified also why wouldn't they be happy that someone is like like i get not wanting to hear somebody sing but it's like what would that show that you're like happy at work you know no they Old Navy was the most toxic place I've ever worked. That's like crazy. I had to file multiple sexual harassment suits and oh. like and in return they tried to get me fired. They oh. I almost was asked to be like a guest speaker on the news for the Me Too movement because of Old Navy. So Wow. Yeah. Um <laughs> anywho. Oh. Um yeah. I didn't actually enjoy the job. They they were thinking if you're just standing around singing, you could be folding. That's what they said. Like so that that, that those things are not mutually exclusive. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So your professor frequented, yes, and he admitted it. Yeah, he talked about going on trips with his fellow professor friends to mm. Thailand to um, enjoy the, yeah, the young boys um, in Thailand. So, mm. yeah. Um, I, me and a, a, another student reported him to the dean. Oh, good. Okay. That's so, good. you know, it didn't really help with our grade, though. I got a B, so, but. Um, That's yeah. good. I think okay. Okay. My guess. Okay. Okay. My guess. Okay. It's either. I think the Thailand one is true, unfortunately, but I think it's either the first one where, uh, like, it was the first date instead of the second date or something like that, or it's the third one where, like, someone else did it and not you. But I don't know which one. Okay. The you have to pick lie. now. Oh my god! Okay, I'm gonna guess number three is a lie. It's all a place the lies. Number one. Yeah. I want to know what GK's guess is because they are convinced um, that they got it. My gut mm-hmm. says number one, but I'm honestly stumped. So it looks like number one is in the lead. Yeah, that's because I'm thinking like maybe it was on the first date or something. Like there's one teeny tiny difference. 
but I'm going to go with number three. Okay. You are correct. It is <gasps> number three. Number three. Was, so what, what, what part of the story is true, if any, of the third story? I did lean on the headset, but I was drumming mm. and my ring tapping. So they could hear it tapping to the beat of the song uh -huh. and they, and they could hear me heavy breathing. And so oh, I okay. off and they said, whoever's heavy breathing on the headset, maybe fold some clothes instead. That, it makes it even worse that yeah. like, that they said that not you doing that, but also that's the most autistic thing I've ever heard of drumming along to the beat. And right. Then, also, well, how dare you breathe? Like what the hell? But <laughs> So he really did, yes. Uh, but um, someone else was singing along to the radio, like to the headset once. Um, so the singing did happen. It just happened to Catherine, mm -hmm. poor thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we we hated wearing the headsets. So we usually just, after a, a certain amount of time, you just you just uh, skip it. But yes. Oh, it's uh, not like the store's that big. They can just go get you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he really did talk about, it was really hard to say if it was a first date or second date because like it was, we didn't, he, we mm -hmm. were teenagers, so we didn't really go out. This is the tattoo yeah. guy, by the way. This is the tattoo oh, guy. Oh no. <laughs> um, we didn't really. having a hard time. <laughs> yeah. So we he, didn't really, it was just hanging out, you know, <laughs> we were just hanging out with a bunch of friends. It was like at a yeah. party and he like, you know, took me outside and we were just oh. hanging out, talking, getting to know each other. He's like, let me tell you about my balls. And I was like. I mean, okay there's a lot of yeah talking about your genitalia sir but yeah okay. and then um the professor thing is 100 percent real um i did go to the dean to report him and after that he had to have a shadow in class every day someone had that's to, helpful yes a woman had to sit there and take notes the whole time and like observe him while he taught and he did, did he ever like bring me. it up again not when she was there, okay, you know, okay. but um, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't just hanging out. Like it was like an inside out. Me. No, yeah, it was like, like his testicle was up in his body and the sack was there, but it wasn't in the sack. That's that so makes... common. Like I can't tell, I mean, at least in horses, I'm saying this as if I understand mm -hmm. people's anatomy In horses, that's really common. <laughs> Stop. What a great party! I just wish my other testicle could have been here to say it. <laughs> I screen captioning this. Oh, oh that's so good. I'm crying. No, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the men fails were sadly true. I don't know if that teacher still works there. I just know that it was supposed to be one of those easy eight classes. It's philosophy of business. Mm -hmm. And he was like a quick replacement for the teacher because something happened to the teacher. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and he didn't know what he was doing. And it was clear he would just talk. He literally talking about putting batteries up young boys buttholes. And we're just sitting there like, bro. And of course, this yeah, he's not the flex you think he, it is. Yeah, we all know age, you're a predator now. Yeah, he was a middle-aged white man and it all mm. checked out. But yeah, he had a shadow the rest of the year and I That's got good. a B, B plus or something, but whatever. Anywho. Good on you for telling somebody about him though. That's yeah, hard to do. He was super gross. Um, yeah. This was back before I realized how many repercussions there were for talking about this. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, whatever. Because um, I mean, like, yeah, when I fucking... Um, you know, I complained about at, at Old Navy about sexual harassment and stuff and, mm -hmm. um, you know, threats. And um, they try to fire me. And after that, I learned, oh, now I understand why women don't talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. because you will lose your job. But any, mm -hmm. anywho, your turn. <laughs> that took a dark turn. Okay. So I have three. I don't know if I don't know if I've used one of these before or not, but we'll go with it. Who cares? Uh -huh um okay first one is i accidentally asked the bloods for directions and for those that don't know the bloods are a gang in the u.s yes. um number two is i danced with mr t at a wedding and then oh number three and number three is i once stole a cat family from my neighbor <laughs> okay okay all right are we ready guys are we ready Okay, Mr. T at a wedding, asking the Bloods for directions, accidentally stealing a cat family. Okay, all of these track, to be honest. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, <laughs> okay, all right, three, two, one, go. Where were you getting directions to? Um, I, I was trying to go, there was a bill getting passed, 
Mm -hmm. in Annapolis and I was driving a family like a a Latino family with me to go to that bill being signed or whatever but um what happened was that I got lost in like downtown Maryland something and they were all just like there and I was Mm -hmm. like they'll know where to go not realizing it was a gang (laughs) were they nice they were so nice it was fine okay uh whose wedding it was a friend of mine from college's wedding, and then her, like, dad was a big fan of Mr. T, and because it's, like, he's not, I mean, he's obviously always going to be famous, but, like, you're able to, like, buy time, and he was, like, affordable to have there, so it was, like, a surprise to her dad. That is so cute. I <laughs> hope that's true. Um, fuck, what was the other one? What was the other one? Oh, yeah, Stealing the Cat Family. Explain how that went down. Okay, so Halloween night, set the scene. Um, A a group of children linked arms to stop traffic because there were kittens in the road. Uh And there had already been, over the course of that week, this is really sad, but there had already been other kittens and cats that had been hit on the road from that neighbor's house because they would go and adopt animals Mm -hmm. and then not get them fixed. So they would procreate a whole bunch and then run into the road. We lived on a very busy road like right there and so they linked arms like in all their costumes to stop traffic and then a kid climbed under the car to grab the kittens and then my husband was like what's going on with like the candy and then they like gave him the kittens and then we went out looking for more because I was like these are so small there has to be more like Uh where's the mother so we went out and we banged like food and like a random black cat fluffy black cat showed up i was like hello so we grabbed that one and then the mama cat showed up and then a week later the baby kitten was outside of our door another baby kitten was outside of our door so yeah it was crazy (laughs) (laughs) you're good at this too okay people we need questions i already asked some of the questions i think she asked directions from a different gang i was considering that where the crypt is the the crypt it's the crypts and the blood are the opposing see Okay. This is what I oh okay never mind I I looked up I thought the Bloods were in LA but yeah, I mean I'm sure they're everywhere like it's like a pretty big one but I've I've only heard of that the Bloods being a West Coast thing really they, okay. yeah let's see is there Bloods in Chicago okay so they're not just don't say my state out loud well okay, I guess no. for that particular well I I, I just was, I was going through like you know but yeah yeah how old were the trick or treaters. I I don't know. The children that were dressed up. What did you do with the cats? So we got them all fixed and we got them like all their shots and stuff. And then I was trying to adopt them out because I've done that a lot before. But mm-hmm. everyone who wanted the kittens were really weird. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but the short version, is it, the vibes were off and it was very strange. And so I ended up taking them to my family's farm where they're indoor outdoor cats now. Oh, um. Oh, okay. Well, this changes everything. I was going to say that's the lie because they're primarily a, a um, what's it called? A LA gang, but if yeah, they can they're be found in other- They're in Alabama. <laughs> they're everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Because I feel like that's how gangs are. I mean, I know I know what you're saying where there's like higher like- Right. Like, like um, at the, like, they're very prevalent in California to the point where one of our dress code rules at my high school is you can't wear all blue or all red, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. We need one more question Uh, that we already answered this. Okay, guys. But the bullets probably do no directions. Someone ask about Mr. T. We haven't gotten a lot of info on that one. Oh, how long ago were each of these? That's a good one. Okay, so I have to do the math on this one. So the one with Mr. T was like five or six years ago. The one with the cats was, oh my God. Was it? No. Like five-ish years ago. And then the going to Annapolis was like 14 years ago. Okay. With the bloods, I should say. <laughs> I'm going to say Mr. T is the lie. I don't know why. I have no no basis for any of this because all of it sounds believable. So I'm <laughs> just going to say Mr. T is the lie. Um, now, people, now people are adding in questions. It's too late. We already got him. Okay. So everyone, what are your guesses? I think the cat story is the lie. Um, 
just a bunch of questions. Asking directions is a lie. I think the cat story is a lie. The blood is a lie. Jenna logic rocks. Yeah, all the logic. I'm going to say Mr. T because it's similar to the Stephen King lie. See, you know what? I'm going to say that's my reason too. Yeah. I'm going to follow Jenna on this one. Okay. Okay. So the Mr. Big T reveal. one is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's just the vibes. It's just the intuition. It's, I know you get me every time. You can tell that I my lie every single time. I actually think you have like like a one hundred percent score. On really? Thinking, yes, I'm not even. I can't See, think of a time when you were wrong. This but. is this is why I need to trust my intuition more because I have like a really good intuition. But then then because I'm autistic, I'll be like, oh, I'll doubt it because like, oh, well, I'm not neurotypical. You, you know gaslight what? yourself into not believing your yes. gut feeling. Yes. Jenna is psychic. Yeah, also, I don't. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you listened to the podcast episode where Jenna was the first person I ever interviewed? You should check it out. I yeah, think that was a fun one. The spooky, or a spooky interview or with Jenna Massey. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. I have some weird, I have premonition dreams. Mm -hmm. I um, am very intuitive and I get, you know, vibes about people mm -hmm. and they're always right. And I ignore them. Remember when I told you the, the Haley vibe and yeah, that was my, my bad. I, I ignored it. You didn't ignore it. I ignore it. Cause I didn't even tell you that I got a bad vibe. I, you, I was like, no, this is good. And then I was like, oh, no, now it's feeling bad. We both were like, yes, yeah. no, yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Anywho, oh. that was fun. Well, yeah, guys. the Miss Lutee one is a conglomeration of two different people's, like, uh, from my family's experiences. The dancing at a wedding part was actually my mom dancing with MC Hammer at a wedding, like, for one oh, of her shit. college friends. <laughs> Yeah. And apparently he danced like like with his pretend you can see my arms and legs, but he was like, eh, uh, eh, uh, like back and forth. And then um uh my uh, uh cousin was a uh, an EMT, like volunteer EMT for no, it was my uncle. And he he um went to a thing where Mr. T was like hurt and he had to take him in the ambulance and he was like, What's your name? And he said Mr. T and he's like, No, no, like what's your name real name? And apparently he legally changed his name to Mr. Mid middle name is period and last name is the letter T. I didn't know that. Unless he was joking while in the ambulance, but I don't think so because like they have to provide right. like, information. So, but yeah, but the talking to the bloods uh, by accident, what happened was we we're on our way. The law that was getting signed into effect or being submitted or something i obviously don't know i need to watch uh schoolhouse like rocks or whatever i'm just a bill so, you know like, I, need, I need to watch that again um but uh it was to have make sure that there was always an option for when you're calling on the phone for there to be like a spanish option like press one for uh english press two for spanish or like primo de dos for espanol or whatever but like it was just funny because uh it's the uh the family that I was driving she and her child like could not speak English but that was fine because I was way more fluent then and so I was driving and I got super lost and this was back in the day before like anything like I didn't have like GPS on my phone or anything like I'd printed out directions from like MapQuest or some shit and I, we were super lost I'm like oh my god we're gonna miss it like we want to be there like this is it. and then I was like let's just ask these folks over here and she kept going like no and she kept saying bandadera which mm -hmm. I thought she was saying, like, I thought that meant, like, um, Benderas, which is, like, flag. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, they all have, like, a red kerchief. But, <laughs> like, maybe they're, <laughs> they're nice young men. And I was like, I don't know why you're being, like, so, like, ageist right now or, like, racist <laughs> or something. But, like, I'm going to talk to everybody. So I, I pulled up and put my window down. And I was like, hi. And she's, like, clutching her child. Like, she got her child out of her car and was like clutching her and I was like Jesus and I was like okay anyway miss a drama over here but I was like so I put the window down and one guy came forward and he was like kind of like hesitant and I was like mm -hmm. hi I'm really lost how do you get to whatever building and then he told he told me and I was like thanks and so I drove away and then it wasn't until like literally a year later where someone like it was because there's a lot of I don't know why there's so many 
kerchiefs in my in my rural school I went to. That's probably why it's because it was rural. But somebody grabbed like a red bandana and tied it on their like arm or something. Um, and then did the the gang sign where you spell out blood with your fingers. Yeah. And I was like, wait, that looks like and then I was like <gasps> and then I looked up bandana and it meant gang. And yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. So that was that. And then I did steal a whole family of cats from a neighbor because they just they were gonna die. So I was right. like, whatever. They didn't even look for them or right and we had them for months in case they would ask where they were like or put up flyers or anything i was gonna like tell them but they didn't so they're fine now premonition dream sounds awesome which was the best one there there is nothing awesome about premonition dreams yours were terrible (laughs) your one your one was like yours were, were bad it was like one was like warning about a family member and it was like what the hell like you're not going to warn me about this other thing but you're going to warn me about this this a uh, one bad decision this family member is going to make yeah and, and then the other the, one was like your boyfriend's cheating on you tonight yeah and it's like here here's a front row seat to it you're right. welcome and it's like well, oh no yeah there's nothing fun about premonition it's not like they forewarn you you're gonna win a million dollars you know it's that would be nice stuff. Yeah, that would be. Um, Butters is crying in the other room. I swear it's because she wants to go outside. So oh, BRB, yeah. everyone send in questions. Iona will answer them. Take yeah. the floor. Yay. I am horribly anxious now. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I would love to hear your questions. Bring them on. It doesn't help, too, if your premonition dreams are just, like, anxiety dreams, too. And you're like, oh, my gosh, this is going to happen. And then it doesn't. And you're just anxious for no reason. Um, What are your thoughts on pen names? I love pen names. I'm a huge fan of them. I think they can help if you choose one that fits the um, genre that you're writing in. And also if you pick a name that's, like, unique. Ah, it's Butters. A burrito. Butters burrito. Ah, so cute. Um, I didn't take a break from my website, but I am taking uh, an extended hiatus from my podcast. So that's and so far. It was a really hard decision. I talked with it um, through it with um, people in my family and friends, and then specifically Jenna. Um, but it, I decided to take a break, and it was it was nice. I was answering the um, the person asked how's a break from my website, but. Um, it's not my website that I'm taking a break from. It's my mm-hmm. podcast. Yeah. You, you want to know why she was crying? She was standing on the couch and wanted to get down. Oh. There, there are stairs. We have, have little stairs to the couch. She okay, because I was down. just about to message you and be like, why doesn't she have stairs? Meanwhile, she does have she, fucking stairs. She she's just like, got, hold me, mother. <laughs> she wants to be carried because she is a princess. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anywho. So, but I got my kisses. Aww. Is there a way to tell a difference between an anxiety dream and a premonition dream? The premonition dream comes true. That's how you tell the difference. <laughs> yeah. That's how you tell the difference. Um, you can't live your life like every yeah. bad dream you have is going to come true either. Or good dream too. Right. But after the first one, I was living my life like every bad dream is going to happen, you know. Mm-hmm. It took me a while to get over it. Now, you know, as an adult, it's a little bit more obvious, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's like a dead person is coming to tell me, hey, here's a message for your dad, you know, and I go, you're dead. And they're like, I know. Mm -hmm. Um, Anywho, this is a great question for you. Oh, oh, did you have any reason? A recent paranormal experience. I'm sorry, I didn't even notice that changed. I was like waiting. And I was like, what is it? And meanwhile, you'd already clicked it. I'm so sorry. That was like such a delayed response. Um, I've had, I feel like my most recent one is the closet uh, yeah. entity, whatever. Tell it's them because that. that is, I mean, yeah. it's less scary now that I know um, that they love the farm but still. yeah <laughs> so while you're away I brought it up before and I'm totally gonna say it again but mm-hmm. the there were baby books in there the kind that makes so- sounds or talk or whatever um and so they all like got um uh like taken out because they kept getting it kept talking like through them I think mm-hmm. and the thing that it says the most is like it's fun here at the farm like I think that's the I can go get the book and 
ask it, but not right now because it kind of freaks me out whenever it comes <laughs> off again and again. Um, but it's been happening for like a couple days. And it happened a while ago too, but it, it's been kind of insistent lately. I wonder if it's one of the existing, you know, like... Um... I could maybe see like Ward. So uh, this... Uh, whoa, sorry. This the one with this, the big horns. The big curly Q horn horny one, one with the little bird on top. Um, yeah. Like he, he used to be a farmer and apparently he used to live really close to where I live. And so um, he he's answered the question like a farmer too he's like southeast from you and i'm like no one knows where that is like right. ward like no one talks like that other than farmers right. you just head southeast i'm like okay let me get my compass like what, <laughs> what are you talking about but yeah it could be him him so, nope since he's like a farm mm -hmm. guy maybe talking through it so i could see that yeah. awesome how do you get past the fear of putting your first novel out there? You don't. It's scary. You just it's do so it anyway. Scary. <laughs> I was I was a mess during the release week of my debut novel. Mm -hmm. I I've like never had so much alcohol in my life just to get through that week. I was constantly okay. crying and having panic attacks. Like I'm not saying that's the norm. I was not yet diagnosed with my mental illnesses and so I also wasn't... you just had a traumatic thing happen to you yeah my I watched my partner almost die so that's yeah. fun um so yeah, it was it was you know I'm not saying that's how it's gonna go for you I'm just saying that that's how it went for me mm -hmm. and it's scary and you just do it anyway um that's really all you like it's gonna be scary but I promise that every book after that gets less and less scary mm -hmm. um I'm not gonna say like by the save by my second book which was the savior's champion it was no fear um mm -hmm. there was fear there but it would say it was like 50 percent I did yeah. not cry I did not have panic attacks I had one night where I was freaking out about something mm -hmm. um because there's always some last minute hiccup and I would mm -hmm. say by the savior's sister I was pretty much like not scared you know, mm -hmm. uh, and now with the savior, with shut up and write the book, I was just like, here's my book. Mm -hmm. Doo -doo -doo. You know, you you get over it. Um, yeah. What say you? Mine kept fluctuating between three things, which was like me being, oh my gosh, I did it, my dream came true, and then this weird like, not I don't want to say apathy because it's it's almost like it was like nothingness where I was like, wow, that's it, like I did a book and like that's like it's like out there now, like okay, like it was more like on the non-feeling logic side of the brain where I was like oh whoa it's happening like it's, I don't know and then um feeling like distraught like what if there's a typo what if there's there's like, always there's always a, there's like, always a typo yeah like you can't help like there's when I sh when I really shut up and write the book there was one typo and it was on the first page of the first chapter god damn it and that got so like combed over mm -hmm. too. yeah I mean at least 10 people um read it in the final stages i'm not even talking about before then you know mm -hmm. so it is what it is um how did you come up with the idea for ashes says ash oh, oh hi ash <laughs> i feel like i've talked to them before i've seen them around on like instagram but um i came up with the idea for ashes because we were driving to where we were gonna my husband and i were gonna get married and also i like was doing that thing where i was looking into the woods and imagining things running in it like because well if you're the passenger don't do that if you're a driver but i imagine this this the candid carry what, what ended up being the candid carry like running through there and it kind of freaked me out and then i kind of free wrote a little bit about like a scene that came to mind and i was like this has to be in there and it's the part where she's like about to go through the brambles so yeah i don't know if that makes sense but no, I, it's it's, it's I only I'm only talking about vibes, which is like right. How well, that's kind of how it is, you know. Stories come to mind. Yeah. Do you think it's a bad idea for people on the younger side, eighteen to fifteen ish? I thought they said twenty five. I mean, the answer is still the same. To publish overall, mm. yeah, I do. Um, that's not to say there aren't any exceptions to the rule. I mean, mm. but I would assume I am the rule, not the exception. The thing is, is usually when you publish at a young age what people say is wow this was a very good book for a teenager or it's so like backhanded yeah they don't say this is a you want them to say this is a very good book period not mm -hmm. for a teenager mm -hmm. um you don't want them to be reading it very cognizant of the fact that a younger person wrote this and thus mm -hmm. there's less experience you know and less um skill mm -hmm. um when I look back at my writing from when I was 15 to 18, it was 
Like I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It was fantastic. It, I was I won a lot of writing contests at my school. Mm -hmm. um, I was the only one to get an A in my um, advanced creative writing class. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very skilled as a writer. However, if I were to have published anything I wrote back then, mm -hmm. at my age now, I would be mortified because yes, I was very skilled for a teenager. Mm -hmm. It does not, it has like no comparison to what it, an adult would create. Mm -hmm. um, not saying all adults are skilled too. We've all read books written by adults where it's like, wow, honey, mm -hmm. what happened here? So that's not to say that, oh, adults write better than teens because some adults write like shit. I'm just saying that at your teenage skill is always going to be less developed than your adult skill. That's because your brain isn't developed yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And th there are certain things where even if I was great with prose and syntax and grammar, mm -hmm. I didn't understand what love felt like, really. I thought I did. You know, mm -hmm. I had a boyfriend mm -hmm. and I told him I loved him. But looking back, I w did not love him. I, mm -hmm. But I really thought I did. Mm -hmm. Um. I didn't understand a lot. I didn't have a lot of personal life experience that is necessary to create realistic three-dimensional characters. I wrote a lot of cliches, a lot of like... Rich Mine was really tropey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of um, she's beautiful, but she doesn't know it. I oh, wrote a lot of that shit, you know, yeah. like um, uh, a lot of, you know, damsels in distress. So all that to say, um, no, I, I really don't think it's a good idea. Not only because you'll probably be embarrassed by the time you're an adult and you see that not only because of that, but also because like being a teenager is fucking hard. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, people talk about how hard adulthood is. I would take being 37 over being 17 any day. Being a teenager was literally some of the worst years of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so much pressure you don't have you're not you mean you're living in a house and you're going to school there's so much pressure to conform and fit in mm -hmm. and it's really hard to be an individual as a teenager in my opinion it's really hard to be authentic to yourself um I mean I was going to school full-time plus I had a job plus I had homework I don't see how I could have possibly published a novel and done and written it well, published it properly, did all the marketing steps, mm -hmm. understood the business side of it when I was 15 to 18. There's no way I could have done that on top of going to school and everything. So in my opinion, like it's, this is the time for you to focus, like just get through this time mm -hmm. of your life and save all that business shit for when you're an adult and you have more freedom and, um, you know, you, you know, you're not confined with homework and school and stuff like that mm -hmm. you got enough to deal with is what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. what say, what say you I was gonna add to what you're saying and also say you can still write though like I mm -hmm. think it's great if you still write if you enter things into like um like um oh my gosh I almost said beauty pageants what is going on <laughs> like writing well, contests yeah thank you yeah. the beauty pageant of the writing world <laughs> which are writing contests no I'm just kidding but um it, that I think it's great that you're like honing in your craft because it'll just add to the foundation. But I think that whenever someone's that young, like I don't think that their brain is fully developed and they also haven't like, they're just trying to like survive being a teen, just like what you're talking about. Like why? And there's so much pressure put on teenagers to be older than they are, not give mm -hmm. them space to grow. Like think about all the growing um, you've done since, even just like a couple years ago. And there's like a big difference and like for someone whose brain isn't fully developed and that's not said as a slight either i'm not gonna be like oh someone who's so immature like i'm not saying it like that it's like your brain literally you should be. is not <laughs> no, yeah. no I, I think there are lots of lovely teenagers out there that are like i don't mean to say like immature but yeah they should be they're anatomically you're not you're not supposed to be m mature if you are like mature for your age that usually means like congratulations trauma. on the trauma you endured yeah, or the masking <laughs> you know? that you're doing which is yeah. also traumatic and yeah. you know itself but yeah so I think that it's it's not saying don't write but it is saying like right yeah there, there's a reason there's so many reservations I also okay this is my own personal thing and maybe you feel the same way but I also don't think that children should be in the public eye mm -hmm. and being an author would make you be in the public eye and it's just not like super safe to be in in the public like that especially because there are authors who are grown adults that are totally, their brains totally developed and they still accidentally write 
um, tropey stuff, problematic stuff, or do self insert or wish fulfillment. I mean, there have been a couple like this is like a little bit off topic, but there have been a couple like true crime things solved because the person that like did the bad crime, whatever that was, wrote about it in their self published book. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, it's crazy. So it's just like these are grown adults who can think through like what mm -hmm. this looks like and what the consequences of being a published author are but they still fumble and that's totally okay other than the crime part don't do crime don't do crime <laughs> but like uh, but as a kid like you should be able to have the space to like fumble like that and not have to deal with like the any kind of public criticism yeah. like for your developing brain so. i i can speak as someone who has a very public platform i receive rape threats i receive death threats mm -hmm. i have men asking to buy my worn underwear um and as a 37 year old, you know, it's kind of, you, you can brush it off. Um, mm -hmm. I think if I was a teenager dealing with it, really it, scary. it would be extremely I mean, it's still scary. Really scary but yeah, it's just... It would be scarier. Mm -hmm. And also like, you know, my mental health wasn't great. Like a lot of teenagers, you know, I have struggled with depression and, you know, I might've taken the kill yourself, you know, threats yes. a more seriously. Like, seriously. So, yeah. Don't put that pressure on yourself. That's yeah. what I say. Um, I haven't published in five years. Is it long enough to reinvent your author persona? I don't see why not. Go for yeah. it. I see people doing it in a year, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you overcome a lack of confidence when writing your book? Um, there's this quote. For me, it's not so much a lack of confidence in my abilities, but it would be a lack of confidence in will anyone buy this? Be just mm. because there's so many people out there, it's mm -hmm. like, what are the odds they're going to buy my thing? But this is something mm -hmm. that I like to keep in mind. Whatever you think you can't do, just know that there is someone who is confidently doing it right, doing it wrong right now. Mm -hmm. They have no plans at doing it better. I either and people are paying them to do it please believe in your own excellence as much as they believe in their mediocrity and that is mm -hmm. by um dangerous woman um that's the the account um nice. what really helped me when i was feeling a lack of confidence while writing one time is and i don't recommend this because we don't want to give this woman our money her, uh money by the time it wasn't revealed she was a turf but i went back and i reread re the first harry potter book um, and I was like, maybe if I read this, I will learn what she did well and I will become inspired. And I hadn't read it since I was a little kid. And I reread it as an adult and I just laughed hysterically through reading it because it was so fucking bad. It like it was just, ob it, it was objectively poorly written and people just have nostalgia glasses on. Mm -hmm. And after I read that, I was like, this bitch has an amusement park. I'm fine. Like pe people thought this was good. I'm fine. You know, um, Twilight is another good example. Um, mm -hmm. Akatar, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's lots of books out there. I mean, I would say Sanderson, but that is more subjective. There are lots mm -hmm. of really famous books out there that are not great and people are, you know, relishing them. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah. Also a lot of art is like subjective anyway. Like whenever, mm -hmm. I think another thing to keep in mind too, is like my, for, for my own personal thing, my confidence does fluctuate quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still don't, let it keep me from doing what I want to do because then right. it, it's like I don't know it's almost not I don't know how to phrase it but like not that anyone's winning like but I would I would lose like mm -hmm. the you're the, letting the mean voices win yes that thank you like it's like letting it's like letting the other uh, I don't know yeah the mean voices win when it's just like this is what I want to do like what's the worst that can happen I right. go through that in my mind and then I'm like, okay. And then on the flip side, what you're saying where it's like, well, what if like good things happen to you? Like if, what if bad things can happen and what if good things can happen to you? It was like a big, you know, change in my heart, but right. that happened after therapy. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh -huh. yeah. Same. Um, have you ever gotten writer's block when trying to begin the first chapter? No, because I use outlines. So writer's block is when you don't know what to write next. I always know what to write next because I have an outline. So with the first chapter, if you don't even know where you're going to start the book, then you've, you're drafting way too early. You kind of go back to planning and figuring stuff out. Mm -hmm. What say you? Um, I don't typically have writer's block, but sometimes I will get stuck and not like want to write the next right. portion, which is totally fine. Um, yeah. But I just end up doing it anyway. Yeah. Like even if you don't feel like it, you can still do, you don't have to feel motivation or any kind of thing to do something and it exactly. wasn't until I did stuff like 
like not half ass that's not the right word but like like oh my words are bad today um how dare can you tell i'm an author (laughs) (laughs) just come to me um but it's like uh i don't know how to say it but basically whenever i'm writing and i felt like shit while writing but then i read my writing and it wasn't shit yes your writing doesn't match how you feel yeah it just matches the amount of work you put into it Mm -hmm. that's that that's when it kind of broke that bubble of like if i feel like shit then i'll just shit all over this page and it's like no that's not true right (laughs) jenna you use chapter titles what made you decide to use them and what kind of books do you think best benefit from them um the only kind of books where you need to have a chapter title and it like benefits the book is nonfiction, um particularly nonfiction like self-help books because then readers know okay this chapter is all about um you know motivation or this mm-hmm. chapter is all about how to make money you know like mm-hmm. so those are the only books that need to have a chapter title um fiction books you absolutely there is no rule that you need to have a chapter title and honestly i don't think there's a benefit to them or a non-benefit it's just something where you can use them or you cannot it's like there there is you know fiction you could do it you could not do it i did it just because it was kind of fun that was it. Mm -hmm. And then now for the savers army, I have to use them because I use the, and this is very common in um, books with multiple point of views. The chapter title will often be the speaker. So now in the savers army, I, I have to have chapter titles because it's letting people know who's narrating this, uh, this point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, But other than that, if you just like make up titles for fun, that's totally fine. But there Mm -hmm. isn't like a benefit per se. It's just a fun thing to do. So yeah. What say you? I don't have anything to add to it. I I was boring and I didn't name my chapters. Yeah, I don't. I mean, like, I don't think either. I I was going to say I'm not going to have chapter titles for the rom-com, but I will. But it'll just be J- Jamie, Elena, Jamie, Elena. You know, it's not mm-hmm. going to be fancy. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to sneeze. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Going through the questions. Oh, is this the guy who did the Aragon or whatever? Yeah. Or- Okay. And it's funny because whenever I was his age, I was like, wow, I wish I could be published like him. And I read it because we're like close to me. Actually, I don't know how old he is. I feel like we were. Let me see how old he is. He is 40. Never mind. (laughs) Wow, he's older than me. He's 10 years older than me. I thought he was my age or maybe it was like, oh, whenever he published, it's like, oh, I started this back at. Uh-huh. this age or something like that and I was like oh my gosh that's my age right now so mm-hmm. but then you said what happened when you read it I read it and I liked it well okay I read it and I said I liked it but I did have to push myself through a lot of it not realizing that that's not something you should have to do yeah and then I remember the that bubble again the 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 rosy colored bubble being popped when I went to Barnes and Noble or I forget what it was one, the one that shut down now I don't remember what it's borders yeah. borders books and I was like I loved borders but I was in there and um, I was talking about like raving about it but then one of the booksellers was she was like I'm it was very good for a whatever yeah. age but there and she said but there were times in the book where like you could tell it was written by a kid and I was horrified I was like how dare you say that about someone this book was amazing and I almost like doubled down on my original like I love it kind of thing but uh-huh. then it kind of like sat with me for a while and I was like no you can't <laughs> tell <laughs> <laughs> okay let's see in what part of the process should you start working on your book cover um you I mean you can do it earlier if you want to but the most um reasonable time that makes sense with the timeline is after the book has been formatted because if you are going to have physical copies of your book you are going to need to know its spine width Mm -hmm. and you're going to need to provide that template to your cover artist and they cannot create the full book cover until they know the trim size and the spine width Mm -hmm. um that said you could if you wanted to enlist the cover artist earlier and have them just do the front cover and wait on the spine and back um, some cover artists offer that, um, some do not, I would mm-hmm. assume, but, uh, but yeah, like, uh, if you do the cover too early, um, there's a chance that you're going to have to redo it. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
yeah, you, it, once your book is fully formatted, then you know the spine width and everything. Mm -hmm. What say you? So I am a great example of what not to do. <laughs> for ashes, I was fine. I waited until it was totally done until it went, and I had them format it for me with mm -hmm. the thing that was a bad decision, but it's fine. Um, and so that I waited, I did it correctly with ashes. With a birch, I was going through so many health crises and a lot of mental health crises that I was like, I want something pretty to look at and this will help me feel like more motivated, which is again, that chasing the motivation is not sustainable. So I had, and like I had this person who's lovely by the way, and um, I had her do the cover and she did a full illustrated cover, which is nothing like the first cover, which is bad. And then I didn't even quite understand, like I didn't even have like it written totally well what birch looked like and so i gave her like things to look at but she's like oh i'd love to read the description of what she looked like and meanwhile the thing that i'd written was like Bleh. like it wasn't well written it was still like somewhat in bullet points somewhat written out like it was not good and then she was like oh how thick is it and i was like i didn't even finish the first draft yet but i really want this cover and so she was like oh that's fine and so she so she made it for me however that was a bad decision because i don't have the back of the book blurb yet i don't know how thick it's going to be so i don't know it turns out that i need to have a, the cover redone anyway because um uh the uh one is illustrated and the other one is like realistic photo, like photos. And so um, they need to match to be in the series. So I'm just going to put the illustration in the book now that I know that's okay to do and have the cover redone. And then the title has changed. So that's my <laughs> long winded answer to do it whenever the book is done and formatted, like Jenna said, and not for like um, motivational yeah and Amazing. i know i know a lot of people who have done that i know someone who's had like four covers made already and interesting like, yeah oh, stop but anywho yeah um all right folks it's time for another sprint what is everyone oh yes butters i'm i'm, I'm talking about sprints you love to sprint yes hey say hello say hello to everyone Hi, buddy. look at that little wiggle waggle look at that she wiggle has the waggle. fluffiest most beautiful tail Yes, and it's so funny because she's brown, but her butt is white. <laughs> she's got a little white butt, and you can't tell, but she's got a little white spot on her chest. Aww. But her her mane covers it. Yes, mm. we're talking about you. Okay, we're gonna do a sprint. What is everyone gonna work on? I have to finish tidying the house. That way, I don't have to worry about butters. Worry about it after. Yeah. This right? Right I'm here. going to run and get something to eat real quick, and then I'll come back and maybe do more birch stuff. Sounds amazing. Uh, <laughs> really? She's so like... she's such a love bug. She has this new um ritual where every morning when we wake up, she climbs under the covers and snuggles next to me. So she's just all you see her is a little tail sticking out from under the covers. Oh, <laughs> thank you. She's just a snuggle girl. She's a little snuggler. She's also going through her once a year, she sheds a lot. It's mm -hmm. like she's getting rid of her winter coat. Mm -hmm. And it's just starting now, and my allergies are already bad just from mm -hmm. like pollen. And now, <laughs> now you have her hair tufts. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like I always feel it on my nose. I just yeah. always feel fur on my nose. But yeah, so she's losing her. She's losing her winter coat. She's gonna, molting. Yes, butters. <laughs> but but you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Yes, you are. I just love her so much. Okay. So Anywho, guys, let's put what? What? She's so cute. Okay. We will put 20 minutes on the clock. Uh, everyone get to work. Three, two, one, go.
All right, everyone, how did you do? I kicked ass. I finished my entire to-do list. I tidied the entire house. I, hello, yes, I did, Butters. I um, sent my proposal off to my critique partner. I checked um, medical emails and realized that I accidentally pissed off one of Cliff's doctors, so I had to go and kiss some ass. Anyway, that's what I did. It's um, always fun. <laughs> I miss uh, I misunderstood the next the instructions for the next prescription refill, and because mm -hmm. I misunderstood that, she thought I misunderstood the whole appointment, and I had to go back and be like, "No, no, no! I we did everything like you said the appointment. I just misunderstood how this refill was gonna go, and so yeah, hope, hope what I said was okay, but you know, whatever. How did you do? Um, I did great. I ate soup and salad, delicious, <laughs> which is my go-to. <laughs> Amazing. You say this, you don't like salad. <laughs> yeah, I don't. But I wish I did. It looks I pretty, it but the texture, really pretty. the texture just disgusts me. But ever since that totally makes sense. It's very crunchy. Um, mm -hmm. but it's the, waxy. The leaves are like it's like oh, yeah. chewing and wax. I had paper. like your worst, like your least favorite. I had like spinach, romaine hearts, and kale. So you would have died. Yeah, but it would have <laughs> if it was the worst ever. There'd be broccoli in it. And I do I'd love like... broccoli, but not this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I did, and I got a little bit caught up with um, my family downstairs. Oh, <laughs> and then um, I think that's it. Like, I'm pretty sure that's everything I did. Nice. <laughs> and I'm using my planner, like just making sure everything's in there. Nice. Yeah, so. Damn, Rory, congratulations. That's amazing. They I always write a ton. Right? Jesus. I still, I'm still like overthinking. I'm going to send you the message uh, that she sent me just so you can understand. Cause I'm like, yeah, I want to see. I feel like I got chastised. She's kind of like that sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, she's, she's the one who's like very, very passionate about helping him. But sometimes, um, you know, sometimes she's not nice. Okay. I'm sending you. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you um, what I set, set. Well, I'll, I'll just send you what she said in response to me. Okay. And then the things I said afterward, because the things that I said at the beginning aren't even like, I guess don't even matter. Um, okay. And I know there's no context to it. I'm sending it to you on, it. A, on a, yeah. <laughs> cool. But just, am... okay. just um... to, to make sure my response is clear, but Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. I think that's just, like, kind of how she talks, yeah. too, from the sound of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But she thought, because I said, just keep the prescription the same, that we weren't. But... Uh, but you have to keep... Okay, yeah. But... So but I thought that we said we were going to do that. That's I just, you know. Yeah. But anywho, is this, this, these were my, I sent two messages back because I was freaking out. <laughs> okay. Are these clear? <laughs> yep. The second one, especially. Okay. Yep. Yep, you got it. Okay. I'm just like I mean, I love I love that he has this doctor on his team, but she definitely like I think she's used to working with people that don't understand like like okay, for instance, when I was in pharmacy school, there was this professor talking about their experience working with like the general public, which is most types of pharmacists end up being retail pharmacists. So that that's with the general public. And mm -hmm this woman was like the medication you gave me is no good the doctor said that it would help me immediately i've been taking it for a week now it was like um a certain type of antibiotic where you had to take like drink a ton of water with it uh -huh. and so it was like oh so you're like she, they're like oh no so your whatever infection or whatever is getting too bad um and and it's like yeah and i they're like walk me through how you're taking it because this requires like a whole glass of water like there's some types of medications where you have to drink water with it or right. it won't work or salt or whatever like there are weird instructions and she's like 
So what I do is I take it with water and they're like, yeah, but like, tell me like how much water she's like, like a lot. And they're like, how, like, but how like much? Cause everyone's version, it's she different. was filling a tub, putting the medicine in the tub and then soaking in the tub. And so I think that when <laughs> people are used to working with the general public, mm-hmm. cause she kind of Amelia Bedelia did it and that's fine. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not her fault, but it's just that I'm pretty sure that the way she's writing things is like in bullet point lists and just kind of like just stating things as they are mm-hmm. because she's used to working with the general public is what it sounds like. Yeah, that makes sense. But I just felt, you know, I felt like I got chastised. I'm like, damn, I'm all grown up. No, I don't think so. I think she just, like, has to... Also, uh, like, coming from a clinician, which, like, I'm not a medical person, and I don't have my doctorate, but, like, I am considered a clinician. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have to, like, record everything, every kind of interaction. So it's really easy. Instead of being, like, I emailed the client, and I told them this, and this is the summary of it. It's so easy to be, like, I emailed the client, see below. And then mm-hmm. you just copy and paste it over into the note. Mm-hmm. And then you don't have to explain that. I did remind them about this. I did go over instructions with that. And here's right. the proof of it. Like, it's so much easier just to email, right. like, just to copy and paste the email over. Yeah. Um, I think someone's just sending song lyrics in the comments. Um, I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. But anywho, uh, I have a question. What is the limit for enemies to lovers? Like, what makes it impossible for them to become lovers? Abuse. Yeah. Um, I mean writers have done it so i'm not well saying... also dark romance like if you're in the dark yeah. romance genre that's fine because that's right. like more like fantasy not fantasy but like like sexual fantasy type stuff yeah but yeah so at, well, we're gonna assume you're not writing a dark ran- romance because if it's dark romance kind of anything goes mm-hmm. um so if it's just like a regular romance um if there's abuse it's any form of abuse it's going to be hard to come back from that um mm-hmm. um which some you know they they did that in Akatar, they did that in um um what's it called uh six of crows there are popular books where oh, yeah yes yeah, so there are popular books where they do it and so some people are okay with it but in um from a like an actual understanding of romance mm-hmm. and how it's supposed to be written um you're not supposed to because it's supposed to be a romantic fantasy and mm-hmm. um you know it's not romantic to abuse someone. So if physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, emotional abuse, I mean, obviously if they're enemies, financial is yeah. another one that um, is bad. Like we're like, I'm just going to hold on to your money. Right. Well, yeah. you can't spend it on that. It's like, yeah. what? And, it, and obviously it's enemies to lovers. So they're probably going to not like each other and say mean things to each other. But this mm-hmm. is a difference between being like, fuck off and like mm-hmm. emotional abuse. Yeah. Like, very um damaging things um yeah and the only time that i personally think like violence at the start is okay is if they are enemies in like a battle like one's like a soldier for this side and the other's a soldier for that side so they're you know they're in battle and they're fighting you know like a situation it definitely like- works better for a fantasy i right, think exactly. i'm having a hard time like like i think when people say like enemies to lovers in contemporary romance i feel mm-hmm. like it's more of like a um, rivals to lovers right. or exactly. like co- competitive people to lovers or something. Exactly. Or mild yeah. annoyance. Or there's the bully romance, which I fucking hate. And oh, that's I a don't dark like romance. those. Yeah. Don't yeah. do it, please. Unless you're writing dark romance, then whatever. Mm-hmm. Will a first draft always be full of plot holes? I hope not. I don't think so. If you outline, you should have very minimal plot holes. It's not a fail safe. Like you still might find plot holes yeah. as you write. Yeah. But it shouldn't be like filled with like the foundation yeah. of your work should should be. Yeah, if it's looking like Swiss cheese, then I would create a new system. Yeah, you, yeah. Because yeah. Um. One yeah. second. Okay. Um. I agree. I prefer rivals to lovers, or I I prefer dislike to lovers. Like got off on the wrong foot to lovers. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like like or like um a misunderstanding to lovers mm-hmm. is nice when That's it's written girl. well because sometimes whenever it comes to a misunderstanding it's just like why okay. doesn't anyone communicate you know mm-hmm. but 
I oh. read a, a, a rom-com that was supposed to be enemies to lovers. That's how it was marketed. And the reason they were enemies is because this new guy joins the workforce and she thinks he's coming for her job. So she stands in front of him and eats his donut in his face. And I was just like, I hate this woman already. This is the dumbest, stupidest thing that I have ever fucking heard in my entire life. And I hated her through the whole book. It was mm -hmm. so fucking like you, you are this author's trying too hard. I ate his donut. She just stood there and ate it. And I was like, and then he ends up fucking her. I'm like, he's how are you attracted to this this woman who's like 27 going on seven? Yeah. <laughs> I know that one. Oh, I hated it. I really it was I just, don't know that one. It I I wanted you to like it because it's um yeah. I can't remember what it was called, to be honest. Oh okay. I wanted to like it because it had like like you know, the love interest was South Asian and it mm -hmm. was like, you know, they were they were traveling to India and I was That's like, ooh, cool. this sounds like really, really cool it was so bad and it mm -hmm. was it read a little uh fetishy and then you read in the the biography it was you know like a white woman she was like this is dedicated to my husband who's south asian and he was the inspiration for this no. and it was just it was just kind of gross yeah. it was, you know but anyhow <laughs> uh okay anywho um Let's see the question. Uh, have there been stories where it's lovers to enemies? Yes. I think the most obvious example, I don't know if this is like true lovers to enemies because I haven't actually seen it, but that one Star Wars movie with Padma and Anakin, like they were lovers and then they, don't they, by the end, he's a bad I'm guy. So, I so don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, oh, okay, you're I'm, right. Because I remember Anakin. <laughs> Anakin yeah. He becomes Darth Vader. I'm sorry. Yeah. I totally. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't even seen it. I just, you know, um. there there have been stories though. But um, if you're asking if there's been romances, I think that yeah. would make it not count as. Yeah, it romance. wouldn't be a romance if you did this in a romance. Yeah. Um, um, but you could do this in a, a non-romance. This happens all the time. What is the difference between rivals to lovers and enemies to lovers? So it's like the definition of what rivals is versus yeah. enemy. An enemy is like two people who like really hate each other mm -hmm. rival is two people who are competing against each other for the same goal so rivals to lovers would be like two people at the same job competing to get the promotion or mm -hmm. two people at school competing to become valedictorian mm -hmm. so you just gotta look up the definitions um okay so some of y'all are unhinged is there another sister we can mar mark off the unhinged chat in the... <laughs> no, it's just like, I, like, I'm like, I, I'm not even dealing with this. Is there <laughs> another system I can try besides outlining? Because usually you get halfway through an outline, something I wrote either isn't going to work or has to be changed in order for the story to work. Um, no, that's just a normal part of having an outline. Uh, the outline is a guide for you. It's not a contract that you have to sign with blood. So it's okay if you get halfway through a story and you need to change something from your outline. That's totally fine. Then you can go back and reconfigure the outline. So, I mean, anything else that I were to describe besides an outline would just be... Writing the whole book and then having to rearrange the whole book. Yeah. Right. Or just a different format of an outline. Like an al a lot of alpha drafts are just long outlines, you know? Mm -hmm. What say you? Yeah, I was just thinking of like, if the, the issue uh, with having a whole bunch of plot holes in a an outline doesn't have any consequence really because I, th I think that like it would just mean that you're you go back and move things around whereas mm -hmm. if you do that like with a whole manuscript that's way more labor and like wa like wasted time so it's okay to have a bunch of stuff going wrong in your draft because that's the messy part and it's made for erasing and rearranging so mm -hmm. don't worry about that that's okay right. <laughs> did she drink his milkshake as well <laughs> honestly there was a scene where she wanted to spy on him while he's at work and so like Okay, I'm neurodivergent, so I'm awkward as hell. But like, we all know if someone's in another room and you want to spy at them, you just kind of like peer through the window yeah. or like peer through the door. She like was doing all this like crawling on the floor, crawling under desks. And people were like, what is she doing? And I know the author was going, look, she's so cute and quirky. But it wasn't. It was like, you're a grown ass adult <laughs> acting like a fucking child. I could not. She was insufferable. I That's tend to get like the ick when somebody is an adult trying to act childish 
mm-hmm. like and using like child logic and stuff like that. I don't know. Like it's like I'm just hold I'm, I quick tuck and roll and it's like I'm like a super spy and it's like I don't know. I just yeah. think it's like really kind of weird when adults pretend to be kids. Yeah, I I really I it's a big problem in rom-coms where they try to make mm-hmm. the, the- the female MC relatable to the female yes. audience like look she's quirky just like us but instead it's kind of like you know what I I understand that you want to make her flawed and relatable but mm-hmm. I don't relate to a fucking idiot you know <laughs> I don't relate to a sophomoric dumbass you know mm-hmm. so it's like I almost feel like can we give her your female audience credit for the fact that some of us have our lives a little bit together mm-hmm. you know it's always like I read this one book where I actually really like the book like I gave it four stars which is saying something because I fucking hated the female MC. She was insufferable, but the male MC really carried the book. He was great. But by the end of the book, there's still no understanding for why he was attracted to her because she did not have a single redeeming quality, not mm-hmm. a single one. And they try to make like, oh, she's cute. She's a nerd. She just doesn't understand. But there were things where it was like, She's an adult, so she should know better. Like the the big thing that happened toward the beginning of the book is that she gets invited to a black tie event, but she doesn't own any dresses. The only dress she owns is a Lord of the Rings Halloween costume. So she wears that. She dresses mm-hmm. like an elf to the black tie event and then is shocked when everyone is staring at her and making fun of her and See, laughing. At this her. is like getting into pick me territory, I feel yes. like. Because it's like, why is everyone looking at me? And it's like, because you're dressed up as an elf? Like, I don't know what to tell yeah. you. It was, and then she's crying in the bathroom over it. And there were so many other things. But it's like, I understand that you're trying to make her relatable, I guess. But even as a weirdo myself, I'm autistic. And I know not to, like, I know enough about social norms not to do that. I feel like a lot of folks, like, I mean, okay, I know that there are autistic folks that, struggle with socializing or understanding like the rules of socializing and stuff like this but also there are autistics like us where we overanalyze mm-hmm. other people and so we like kind of know what to do and what not to do yeah and dressing it, like an elf to a black tie event is that would put and my was, anxiety in hyperdrive and even if she was like an autis- autistic person who didn't understand the social norms she was talking to her friend on the phone and her friend was giving her fashion advice like her friend let her do this and i'm like that's not a friend you sh- need to dump this person but anyway yeah, that's a bad thing i'm just sick of authors uh they're trying so hard to make the female character relatable that they make her like a fucking hot mess and i'm, I'm gonna assume that most of your audience knows not mm-hmm. to wear a fucking uh spirit halloween costume to a black tie event but anywho i'm writing a book that is based on crime investigation but it also has uh quite a bit of romantic stuff plots what genre would this be considered um it would be considered like a thriller or a crime mystery subplots are not relevant to um a genre classification it's just the subplot um if you have if the plot hinges on the romance then it would be like a romantic thriller Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah i know (laughs) but yeah yeah so uh all that to say is it sounds like it's a thriller or a crime novel um Mm -hmm. I almost forgot to open this. Thank you, Iona, for reminding me. This is that other uh, Kindle yeah. case. Well, let's see what it is. Well, look at it. It comes in this cute little bag. It's a case in a case. Right? <laughs> it's so efficient. <laughs> this is so pretty. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. I oh, wanted I you to have the first one first, but that one is the handmade one. I love this. Good. Oh, my gosh. I don't know which one I like better. They're like, they're like, they both have their, you know. That one I was upset with because it wasn't red, but it still has like peonies and roses and stuff. Yeah, it's 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 still the vibe. Dark floral vibe. But it also has burgundy in there. And I like those, Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't have to be red. I like the burgundies and the wines and everything. Butters is giving it a good sniff. Thank you. This is so cute. You're welcome. I'm glad that one was not lost at sea. Right? Yeah. The other (laughs) one got lost and then returned. And now I've got... Now I've got them both. Thank you. Mm. Yay, I love presents. Right, Butters? Do you want a present? Do you want a present? You want kisses? Okay, thank you. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> no, She's so like, good. you're excited and I'm excited. Yes. Sean uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking up the questions. <coughs> I know you didn't outline all of your books for the Savior series at once. What's your main reason behind that? And what are the cons for outlining a series in full before writing? Um, I didn't do it because it's not smart to do. 
um, while you, it's good to have an idea of where the series is going to go. Mm -hmm. I know the main plot of every book in the series, you know, I knew mm -hmm. that the Savior's Champion is going to follow Tobias's journey. Jur yes, I know. During the Sovereign's Tournament, the Savior's Sister is going to follow Layla's during this journey, journey during the Sovereign's Tournament. The Savior's Army is going to follow their journey as they look for an army. The Savior's War is going to follow their journey as they go to war. Hello, Kachu! Mm -hmm. It's good to know the main plot points of those things, but figuring out all the teeny tiny details for the entire series is a waste of time because things change. You know, there was a character that I had planned to kill in the Savior's Army, and I am eight chapters away from the end, and they're still alive. So they might die in the Savior's War, but they're not obviously not going to die in the Savior's Army. You know, things change, and if I had planned the whole entire series before then, um, for now, I would have, I would get to re-outline the last book, you know? It, it's mm -hmm. just a waste of your time. I personally don't know anyone who outlines an entire series before writing book one. The only people I know who have done this have spent so much time outlining the series. It's like world builder's disease, and they never get to book one. I've seen um, that, too. Yeah, so it's, I don't know anyone who's published who does this. No, that's not saying that it doesn't exist. It totally mm -hmm. could. Um, but yeah, I just think it's a waste of time. Um, and, um, like Hylas wasn't originally going to be like a big part of the series and now he's one of the main characters. So if mm -hmm. I had outlined, um, yeah. yeah, it would have been all fucked up. What say you, Iona? Um, I was just thinking something similar. I think of my series more of like in themes or like, um, like, well, I almost said it. I'm not going to say what the themes are. But like, for instance, the first one is like, my brother has died. And the second one, it's like this big entity has died. And then the third and fourth one are exploring. It's just like exploring different types of grief. And so, but it, it's true that like, just like the first chapter, like you're going to end up going back and changing the first chapter, even if you outline, even if you do your whole book, um, because things will change. Um it's the same thing even more so for a series like the the divergence from like the original pl or uh yeah plot that you had written out or outline that you had written out is mm -hmm. going to be greater the farther out in the future you go because you don't know what the future holds right exactly people are asking if i forgot about them there are so many questions guys i am doing the best i can mm -hmm. <laughs> please be um kind and understanding uh there's like about 100 people here i just found your channel you're awesome i'm a journalist that has decided to write my first novel will definitely Yay. follow your advice oh thank you so much uh and congratulations nick that's very very cool have fun writing cool. your first novel um uh let's see um, I think I finally got caught up. When is the third book in the Savior series coming out? Butters. Butters is like, look at me. Butters. Hello. Hello. She's Aww. like crying for attention. Hello. Aww. She's so sweet. Yes, you are. She just wants to give all the kisses. Back there, that little box back there, that is a toy box um, for when my nieces visit. Aww. So they come in here and it's filled with toys and stuff and, and one foot brace. Um, but anywho, um, it was supposed to come out at the end of this year. However, something um, that I can't talk about yet, something business related came up, mm -hmm. which means that I might have to push the release to the beginning of 2025. Um, but either way, it sh hopefully should be coming out very soon. Right, Butters? Mm -hmm. Butters is just standing on my arm, wagging her tail. I think it would be very cool if you release TSA. She has such a cute pom-pom tail. Right. If you release TSA per usual on top of the very right. exciting thing. At the um, same time. Oh my that gosh. That would I'd be really, have... that would, I mean, <laughs> RIP any kind of sleep you plan on getting. Right. But like, that would be very interesting. Like if, if you could do that, but also no pressure. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, Hello. She's like, she's so funny. <laughs> Please talk a bit longer. That's what we're gonna, that's what we're doing. Let's see. Um, she's saying that so that um, she doesn't have to type with melty fingers. Why are you crying? What? What? It's so cute. What? She's Can you guys talking. hear her? Yeah, she's just like, <laughs> she's giving writing advice. What's going on? 
Everyone always talks shit about Chihuahuas. Look at this fierce, mean Chihuahua, mm -hmm. guys. She's so mean. She's so mean. She's so mean with her kisses. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, she's so mean. No, you're not. You're a sweet little. She has the sweetest little voice. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Speaking of blood contracts, how do you write a contract between two characters that may or may not have blood magic involved? Um, okay, so this is all... This is on you. <laughs> You're the writer. Yeah. yeah, we can't. We cannot create the intellectual property for you. You gotta. You gotta figure it out. That's. This is. And that's. You shouldn't want other people to figure out. This is the fun part of being a writer is figuring out all of these cute things. So, mm -hmm. um, she is a sweet little baby. Yes, she, she is. is. She's just. Oh. Aww. It, this is literally how she asks for belly rubs from me and Cliff. She does the thing until you do belly rubs, which I yes, think is it's funny because most dogs lay down for belly rubs. She sits <laughs> up. like it's right here. Yeah, <laughs> touch my tum tum. It's funny. What <laughs> a rant about Chihuahuas killing hundreds of people, but confused the dog with the Mexican state. Like, in so wait, Chihuahuas were the Mexican state. I'm so confused. Um, anyway, she is too cute. I agree. She's the cutest. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm like super distracted by comments. Let's see. Okay. Oh my, what, what, oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I just changed this whole screen and I'm messed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Jay explained it. She thought that the dogs are killing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at look at this ferocious beast. I'm going to kill. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, she's killing yes, yes. Yeah, because there's a, okay. Now I understand. Yeah, there is a there's a, a territory in Mexico called Chihuahua. Yeah. Chihuahua. Oh, so it's like oh, Chihuahua kill or like in Chihuahua, su yeah. such and such many people have died or killed or whatever. And it's like wow. That's a ferocious, that's like Cujo level chihuahua right there. <laughs> yeah, and this is Butter. She's like, I'm going to kiss you to death. Yes, bingo card. My, yeah, put that on the bingo card. Oh, okay. Yes, we, let's see. Do you think it's okay for someone trained in graphic design to make their own book cover? Or is that like an editor editing their own book? Yeah, uh, it's not like an editor editing their own book. It's a different, it's a different yeah. skill. Graphic design is not the same thing as being a book cover artist. Mm -hmm. Yes, Okay, let me put it this way. All book cover artists are graphic designers, but not all graphic designers are book cover artists. That's a good way to put so it. So if you are a graphic designer who has um, um, experience and skill in book covers, then you could totally do your own cover. And that'd be, you know, super easy for you mm -hmm. and like a huge save in money. Um, but just because you're a graphic designer does not mean that you understand the publishing industry, um, what sells for book covers, the trends. Um, uh, what sort of stock photos to use, all that good stuff. Um, so for example, I'm not a graphic designer, but I used to do photography. Excuse me. Um, I used to do photography and I um, have like a lot of knowledge with Photoshop. I still wouldn't trust myself to do a book cover because I don't, um, what was I going to say? I don't uh, have the right knowledge for that. Um, sorry, I keep getting distracted by the comments. I'm covering them. But yeah, so um, if you if you're a graphic designer who has specialization in book covers, then you could totally do it yourself. But if not, you hire someone. Mm -hmm. What say you? Um, I also agree that I know some um, really talented folks who have the skill to make their own book covers and they have and they're actually like, like professional and looking and they're like, they're good way of like, um, I don't know. They're a good. They're, it's a good way of marketing their book. Um, I've met like two people like that. But other than that, it's best to uh, put your book baby in the hands of someone that'll help understand, like help you with um, like that skill that you don't have. It'll help it sell because the cover right. is what people look at. Yeah, it's yeah. what sells the book. Um, 
I feel dog hair all over my face. <laughs> so I probably that, do. Um, yeah. Butters is in her. It's always season. so embarrassing. Someone sometimes will be like, oh, look, there's an orb. And I was like, that is a thousand percent Kachu's hair. <laughs> floating in the air. But just I like floating. how you think. Like, <laughs> So I have multiple videos on this. Definitely check them out. Uh, but basically, there are, there are a zillion book cover designers out there. They're really easy to find on social media and Instagram. I think I follow like eight different book cover artists on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the one that uh, I use most often is Mibble Art. Um, I use them for Shut Up and Write the Book, and I'm probably going to use them for the Savior's Army. But obviously, mm -hmm. it's totally up to you who you decide to use. I just recommend Mibble Art. I do have an affiliate link for them. I'll leave it in the comments. I recommend them because they are super affordable. Um, cause like, I mean, I had one book cover package that was like $800 mm -hmm. and then with Mibble art was like 150 mm -hmm. and the quality with the Mibble art one was better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, so yeah, I, I do, I recommend them. They're, they're a lot more affordable and, um, they, they're, um, what well, probably the easiest, um, um, artist I've worked with, like nice. just, and they were really, really fast. So here Got we go. It. That's an affiliate link, which means I get a commission. But um, that being said, um, I would not be recommending them if I didn't actually like them because I'm not recommending uh, Demonza. No. And they offered me an affiliate link and I said, nope, because mm -hmm. I fucking hated them. That was so a anyway, bad time. <laughs> yeah, we both worked with Demonza and we both did not like them. Mm -hmm. Anywho, do you want to do one more sprint? Yeah, sure. That sounds okay. good. I'll take right, us good. right to the end. Look at us being all productive and shit. Right? And nice. like, you did so much shit today. I did so much shit today. And right. then we're going to give you three sprints. What, yes. the, what craziness is this? <laughs> it's been a while since we've done that. Oh, my goodness. Butters. Wait. Hi, buddies. You didn't bring the ball back to me, so I can't throw it. She has this ball, but she doesn't like this ball. Oh, I get it. She likes the one that's like pink and blue, I feel like. She likes the ones that are uh, funky. Yeah, yeah. She needs the funk. She needs the... Oh, look, you're not even going to bring it back to me. I'm not even going to bring it back. She's I like, no one is. deserves this trash. Right? Okay, That's but so anywho. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Setting the timer, 20 minutes. Oh, my... <laughs> you see her? She's okay. So <laughs> 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 what? You want me to get another ball? Is that what you want? She's like, read my mind, mother. <laughs> you want me to get another ball? Okay. All right, guys. Three, two, one, go.
All right, folks, the sprint is over. How'd you do? I did a lot of mundane things, checked my email, um, got the mail, uh, started working on stuff I can't talk about, that sort of thing. How about you, Iona? You're muted. <laughs> I even clicked the unmute button, but never mind. I didn't it said, fuck you. I... Yep. <laughs> um, I planned a bunch of stuff for the rest of the week because it's a really busy week. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the bulk of it was like this weekend and then today and tomorrow. So we're almost there. But um, so I was able to plan out everything. And then I was able to edit um, a video to add like subtitles to it and cut out the dead spots of it for a uh, haunted monster doll post that I'm going to make tomorrow with Carson. Amazing. We love to see it. Yeah. I got the mail and my Etsy order came in. I ordered that bracelet oh. for, you know, oh. so many things happen lately. And I was like, I need a little reminder, you know. I first, I'm so excited. This is like the second Etsy thing you get to open. Right. At okay. first it was like the Haley thing. And then, you know, that mm -hmm. meeting that I had recently. So I got mm -hmm. myself a little reminder. It's a little bracelet. And it says, remember who the fuck you are. <laughs> I'm Jenna fucking Moresi. So let me put it on. I love that. Yeah. And I'll, I have it facing me so that I can look at it and be nice. like, yeah, I'm, I'm I was about to say what I'm doing that I shouldn't say, but <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about it in mm -hmm. DMs. But anywho, mm -hmm. guys. That is it for the stream. Iona, where can everyone find you? You can find me on Instagram and TikTok under at creepycore and folklore. Um, you can check out my website, creepycoreandfolklore.com, if you want to set up a crystal ball reading. Um, you can also get merch and stuff there. Oh, it looks so good on your wrist. It Thank looks really you. good. Thank um, you. You can also get my book Ashes if you're interested in dark fantasy um, and an allegory for living with PTSD. And that's available on Amazon in ebook and paperback versions and on Audible through as uh, an audiobook. I think yes. that's everything. Go buy the book because it's really, really good. And because I said so. So, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, you can follow me here on YouTube. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Oh my goodness, butters. I know. Also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, especially if you want to see more of this little princess. Oh, oh we no. know. We know. Oh. Say, say hello, butters. Say hello. What a perfect baby. Yeah. Because uh, I, I share stuff about butters all the time on Instagram because you're a baby. You can buy all my books at all major retailers and um, get my merch. It's on sale for 15% off with code folklore. I know butters. There's butters merch if you want to if you want to celebrate Butterball. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she's just she's going nuts. Oh, yeah. Also remember to like the stream. Yes, like the stream, and we will be back on Monday. Matt might be joining us. Ooh, um, it will that's depend fun. on his schedule. Oh, my goodness. He's fun. She is so uh, funny. Oh, also, um, this past Wednesday is when uh, I got to be interviewed on Jenna's yeah! channel. So so if you haven't watched, yeah, so yeah, if you haven't watched the interview, you should, totally should. It was really, really fun. And um, yeah, we will be we will be streaming again on Monday, and then um, in two days. I know, I know, you just licked right up in my mouth. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> in two days, I will have a new video go live. It'll be a short one, but a necessary one. Uh, nice. But yeah, that's it. We'll see you on Monday, guys. See you on Monday. Bye. Bye.